to the cross corner. But winning with wisdom. Wisdom is the principal thing. Get it. And with all that getting, get an understanding. Um, so those that are coming in this morning, I'm going to deal with something very powerful um, this morning in the coach's corner. <clears throat> Just let the spirit set the atmosphere <clears throat> and draw those in that are hungering and thirsting after righteousness. Um, that we will be fed this morning. Don't lose your appetite for winning and success. That's that hunger and thirst after righteousness. Don't lose your appetite. I don't know what you may be going through this morning, on this day, but whatever you do, don't allow circumstances to cause you to lose your appetite for righteousness, for success, for winning, for prosperity. Good morning, Sister Erica. Don't allow what you're going through to deter your appetite was a story in the Bible about the prodigal son when he returned home they were celebrating and dancing with the fatty calf eating good but his brother couldn't enter in because his brother had lost his appetite as to think that God was doing something for somebody else the father but couldn't do it for him don't allow circumstances to deter your appetite. This, you are in a season to eat. You will eat success. No matter what you have faced, no matter what you have been going through up until this day, this could have been one of the worst years of your life. But guess what? The year isn't over yet. Daily, he loads us up with benefits. This is the day, our daily bread. Listen, don't you lose your appetite. Don't lose your appetite. Who's the Lord ministering to as they're coming in? But your appetite, do you understand? Glory to God, your appetite. Maintain your appetite for success and prosperity and winning. <clears throat> do you understand? Don't squander your dream or your vision. What you're going through, this too shall pass. Uh, Father God, now we thank you for this opportunity. Uh, we just pray for a fresh flow of the Holy Spirit to begin to move right now. God, prepare the hearts and minds to receive these divine instructions that you would have for us today. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Keeping my appetite strong in this season. Glory to God. My appetite. Listen, as we get ready to indulge in this word today, why um, the man is under attack why the man is under attack. <clears throat> I'm gonna deal with some powerful stuff today. <clears throat> um, in Psalm 62, Psalm 62, um, I got uh, the first verse on the screen. I'm gonna read a little bit more. It says, how long will you attack a man? Man, come on, that's powerful. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> how long? Will you attack a man? Why is the man under attack? How long will you attack a man? Glory to God. Where are the men at this morning? Sisters, you, 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 you interceding for your husband, your father, your sons, your, your, um, your grandsons, women, mothers standing in the gap today. <clears throat> Where are the men at this morning that are under attack, that already can feel this, already know <clears throat> that the Lord is speaking to you this morning? You don't have a spiritual coaching moment this morning because it's some men that are under attack, some great men that are under attack. As the scripture plainly says in Psalm 62, 
And the psalmist here, man, a very powerful man of God. Man of war, David. You know what I'm saying? And now he's at a place and he's like, how long will you attack a man? How long will you attack a man? <clears throat> that is the question many men are asking, you know, but don't even know how to ask. They're just toiling on the inside with this question. You know, how long will you attack me? You understand? It seems like life just keeps coming at them twisted and unjust and unfair. Do you understand? I, I mean, the many men are crying on the inside, not even knowing how to express their emotions. Balled up anger of frustration. Some are putting holes in walls. Some are just going out, screaming out. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying? Crying out in the midnight hour. You know, running into places like even the psalmist here, David, at points in his life, he would run to a cave and go hide in a cave, in a place of hiding. You know what I'm saying? A place of a stronghold. You know what I'm saying? Men are, when men are under attack, or to God, my, 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 men go into hiding. You understand? Into hiding, and David is like crying out now, how long will you attack a man? When is your, when is the attack going to cease? Why the man is under attack? Going to deal with this today. We're going to deal with this today. And David was being attacked on every side. He was being attacked as him being a man of war and being a captain, being a chief, being a king. He was being attacked in his career, uh, in his profession. <clears throat> he was being attacked in his home. Um, you know what I'm saying? There was war in his home between him and his wife, him and his children. Um, it was just, you know, it was our own slot attack everywhere he went. He even talked about how he was being offended by people that he even went to worship with. He was hurt in church. It was like our own slot attack. Why is there an attack against good men? And he had a heart after God. Do you understand? A heart after the things of God. Do you understand the same one that wrote Psalms 23? The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Do you understand? He make it me to lie down. And that's what a man under attack has to be willing to, to know when God make it us to lie down. Glory to God and lead us beside the green pastures. When God can give us rest in the midst of weariness, in the midst of war, in the midst of frustration. In the midst of being stressed out, do you understand? When will the attack, how long, the psalmist asked, David said, how long will you attack a man? At what point are you going to give up? Do you understand? At what point are you going to realize that everything that you tried, every snare and every trap that you set for me, that you keep falling into it? Do you understand? But David is realizing, but we're going to, oh, I'm jumping ahead, but we're going to help you as a man today to realize the traps and the snares that the enemy keeps setting for you, that you're not even falling into it. Do you understand that the only, the only hope of the enemy, I'm jumping ahead, is for you to snare yourself, is for you to entangle yourself, is for you to stay hiding in that cave. Do you understand? Because everything the enemy means for evil against a great man. Do you understand? Against a man of vision, a man of war, a man of worship. Do you understand? A man, glory to God, of generosity, a man of passion and love. Every attack that the enemy sets for them, everything that he means for evil, God's going to turn it up for your good. Do you understand? I know it don't feel good right now. It don't sound good, but you got to understand Romans 8 and 28. For we know this, that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. How long will you be under attack? How long will you attack a man? Is the question of the psalmist today. Glory to God. Just knowing that there is so much that God wants to do through you as a man. Glory to God that there's so much as a man that you carry on the inside of you. Do you understand that? Glory to God. You carry, we carry nations on the inside of us. That's why scripture says man ought to always pray. Do you understand? Ought to always pray. 
Oh, let me stop right there. Glory to God. Ought to always pray. It's a men. Why? Because when a man prays, prays, do you understand? Things come into divine alignment. When a man prays, do you understand? People and things rise to attention. When a man prays, disorder becomes into order. You, you chaos, chaos has the glory to God. When a man prays, chaos is driven out. When a man prays, a woman, listen, a child, that's my father. When a man prays, do you understand? It's something about the power and the authority that God has put in a man. That's why Jesus said men ought to always pray. Brother, be not weary in well-doing. I feel you. I can relate to your pain and passion this morning. Be not weary in well-doing. For in due season, glory to God, you will reap if you faint not. Come on. This has got to be a season that you that you reach over. I can hear David saying, you know what? Give me a word from my brother Job. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. How long will you attack a man? It's the question the psalmist asks today. King David, how long, Lord? When is this going to give? Glory to God. When is my breakthrough going to come? When is the vision going to become reality? When is the dream going to come out of my sleep and I'm going to be able to touch it? When I'm going to quit walking by faith for that and begin to experience that? When I'm going to quit living by faith and begin to live in it, in the dream, in the vision, in the business, in the ministry, come on, in the home, glory to God. When? How long? Will you attack a man? I hear you, King David. Glory to God. My, my, my. When trouble rises up in your own house. And when the enemy is, is done gap from within. And like scripture said in the book of Revelation. How long will you allow Satan to have a seat in your house? Glory to God. Let's deal with some stuff today. Hold on to Luke. Chapter 22, verse 31. Luke 22 and 31. And if somebody would, just type that in. It says, the Lord and Savior is telling Simon, another man, that Satan, the devil, desires to sift you as wheat. To sift. Hold on to that word, sift. Sift. And, and the Lord lets him know, but I've prayed for you that your faith fail not. But I want to deal with that word sift for a moment. Because along with myself, there have been some men that have been going through sifting. Do you understand sifting? What a sifting is, is to separate you. It's to separate you. And that's why even one writer said, I will let nothing separate me from the love of God. No matter how much pain, no matter how much distress depression, debt, frustration, disappointment. He said, I will let nothing and nobody separate me from the love of God. No matter what you're going through, no matter what you've been experienced. Listen, you got to draw nigh, glory to God. You got to allow your spirit man to draw back unto him. Do you understand? You got to stop the separation right now. Do you understand? Because what you got to understand, the Lord said, I prayed for you that your faith fail not. Listen, you in a season, my brother. Man, listen, don't allow your faith to fail. Your faith is what's going to get you through. I know you like, Sullivan, man, I'm at the end of the road and I just don't see no hope. Listen, another thing this King said, King David said, I would have fainted. I would have died. I would have caved in to depression. Do you understand? I would have threw in the, the white towel and accepted suicide. But he said, but I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. My brother, my man, listen. You got to keep your faith. Keep believing to see. David said, I would have been gone. I would have died. But I believe. He said, I didn't touch it yet. I didn't obtain it yet. But I believe to see. And as a man thinketh, so is he. Come on, son. that's what the scripture, it says, as a man thinketh. My brother, I want to encourage you, man, to keep thinking your dream. Keep thinking your vision. 
Keep speaking your vision. Do you understand? Keep calling those things that be not as though they are. Do you understand? I, I feel you. I know you at one of your lowest places in life. And some of the people that are closest to you is bringing you great disappointment. Some of the people that are closest to you are speaking death to you. Come on, it's real. It happened with Job. At his lowest point in life, the person that was closest to him told him, you ought to just curse God and die. Come on. But Job somehow believed that if I can curse God and die, I can bless God and live. Come on, somebody. I can worship God and live. I can shout unto God with the voice of triumph and live. Come on, somebody. I can seek his face early in the morning and I can live. I can meditate upon his word both day and night and I can make my own way prosperous and I can live. Come on, somebody. Though he slay me, yet will I trust him. You got to trust them in this season of under, while you're being under attack. It's got to give, this too shall pass. Oh, my, 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 there's a season and a time for every purpose under the heaven. And your time and your chance and your season, your moment is closer than you think. My, 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 just hold on, my brother. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Hold on, man. Listen, 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 listen. Oh, so, the enemy wants to separate you. You don't feel appreciated. He sends a spirit at you to not appreciate you. Do you understand? To not celebrate nothing that you're doing. To make you feel as though your labor is in vain. It's nothing but a spirit. It oh, my God, my God. Another spirit he sends at you is a lack of respect. Because if it's one thing a man needs is to be respected. Glory to God. You know, and I'm, I'm, I deal with men. I'm dealing with men that are handling their business. Bosses. You know what I'm saying? Men that are operating according to kingdom authority. Do you understand men that understand work and grind and passion, go-getters, men that got something in their head, vision, something in their heart, compassion, love, generosity, they, they're givers, and something in their hand. They're about making money. Do you understand? These are the kind of men I'm dealing with. But the enemy will send a spirit of a lack of appreciation and a lack of respect. Because he knows that we as men, glory to God, is something within us. That, that appreciation that needs to be appreciated, that needs to be respected. If you want to tear them, oh my God. My, 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 listen, listen, I'm going to leave that right there. Oh, Jesus. Respect him. If you're a woman, you got a good man. You need to send that spirit that has creeped in your house of lack of appreciation. And of disrespect, cast it back to the pit of hell. Cast it back to the pit of hell. If you allowed it to creep into your church and you don't appreciate the man of God, the men of God, glory to God, you need to send that spirit back to the pit of hell. Because when men pray, glory to God, come on, some mountains move. Things come into divine alignment. Glory to God, when men pray at the gate, my, my, my. Glory to God. Oh, my, my. A gate keep, keep us at the gate. At the gate of the city. Crime has to go down in them cities. When men are encouraged and pushed to pray. I get back on that. Listen, listen, my brother, don't lose your prayer. Don't lose your prayer. The next spirit that the enemy sends is to devalue you. To devalue you. Do you understand? To make you think that you're not valuable in your own home, in your business, in your ministry, on your job, on, in your school. On the, the enemy wants to devalue you. It's a spirit that he sends to make you feel as though you're not valuable. My brother, you're valuable. You, the woman, women, listen, your men that are in your life are valuable. You send that spirit back to the pit of hell. 
Do you understand? A man brings value to anything he's a part of. A man brings value. Glory to God. Come on, somebody. My, my, my brings value. Brings a spirit of improvement with him. Things get better when the man that I'm talking about is on the scene and shows up. And some of you women got good men in your life and you don't even realize the spirit of improvement and the spirit of value that comes with him and how things are so together and the enemy will send a spirit, a demonic spirit to make you devalue, underappreciate, bring lack of respect. Do you understand this? Like David asked here, how long will you attack a man? David was attacked by his own wife. She despised the anointing on his life. She despised what he did, do you understand? She despised, devalued him, brought total disrespect. He was the king, but she looked at him and, and degraded him like he was a bum on the street because he worshiped God and had a heart after God and walked in kingdom authority. Glory to God. Listen, 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 listen. Hold on to this scripture. The, no, the, the next spirit he sends, and I'm done on these spirits, is a spirit of frustration. To just frustrate a man. To constantly have you fighting battles that can't even be won. With people we talked about last week, as the dog returned to his vomit, as the fool returned to his folly. And even Christ said, beware of dogs. And be, you know, and don't cast your pearls among swine. Do you understand? And even Paul in his writing talked about beware of them same dogs, those evil workers. Sometimes it seems like you're surrounded with all, that's all around you. Listen, brother, just hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Don't frustrate your own hope. Don't arrest your own development. God is just developing you. Come on. For a greater glory, for a greater assignment. Man, you're having success in spite of it. You, sometimes you don't even realize it. Glory to God. Oh, my, my. Success in spite of. My, my. In spite of what the enemy is doing. Still having success. In spite of the attack. Still having great success. And listen, as we get ready to wrap this up. I'm going to read the next two verses. And I'm going to pray and we're going to be done. In Psalm 62, verses 3 through, three through 5, it says, how long will you attack a man? Then it says, you shall be slain, all of you. Come on, man, brother, here come your hope, man. Here come your hope. Wives, here come your hope for your husband. Mothers, here come your hope for your sons. Come on, glory to God. My, here come your hope for your uncles, your cousins, your brother and them. Come on, glory to granddaddy and them, grandson. Here come the hope. You shall all be slain, all of you. Like a leaning wall and a toddling fits. Man, brother, listen. Glory to God. My, my, my God is just developing you. Because everything that the enemy means for evil, God is getting ready to turn it around for your good. Come on. And every enemy, every attack of the enemy is not going to do nothing but ricochet. Every, oh, glory to God. My, my, my. Back at them. The only consult to cast him down. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. Come on, man. Man, we're in a high position. Like, man, you probably like, man, I, man, I don't feel like I'm, bro. You are in a high position. Glory to God. Listen, man, God does the end from the beginning. Listen, some of us are already in positions there and we're not even there. They already know who their next leader is and you ain't even there yet. Come on, man. Come on. Come on, Lord. They already know you're going to be the principal. They already know you're going to be the CEO. They already know you're going to be the bishop there, the pastor there. Come on. They already know you're going to be the coach. Did I say that already? They already know this, that you're going to be the captain there. 
that you're going to be the commander in chief there. They already know you're going to be the president. Come on, somebody. Come here, Barack Obama. They already know. What you're going through, the attacks that you and I am going through is grooming us for that high position that the people that are there already know. <laughs> Glory to God. And when you get there, they're going to be like, man, we was just waiting on you. Don't you disqualify yourself by throwing in the towel. My, 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 don't you disqualify yourself. Position is already yours. Glory to God, the position is already yours. So let's take on the position of Job. The scripture says in Job 42 and 10, I believe, when Job prayed for his friends. <laughs> when he prayed for his friends, glory to God. Kit wounds and kisses, wounds of an enemy are better than kisses of a friend. So he was praying for his enemies. He was praying for his friend. He was praying for everyone that tried to attack him and tried to stop him. That's why Jesus said, pray, forgive them on the cross for they know not what they do. Come on. In the scripture, let me get back to Job. When he prayed for his friends, the scriptures say, and God turned the captivity of Job. Oh my God. It's prayer time. Man, it's prayer time. Begin to pray. Begin to pour out your heart before the Lord. Glory to God. Begin to cry out unto God. Because everything the enemy tried to use to attack you, he tried to pull your children from you. He tried to make you feel un so unwanted, devalued. He tried to steal your money. He tried to use means of manipulation and everything he could to try to tear you down because he know you're in a high position. Oh, my God, my God. Glory to God. Oh, let me finish reading verse 4. They delight in lies. Glory to God. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth. But they but they are cursed. But they curse inwardly. There it is. My soul. Here it is. Listen, brother. As we get ready to go into prayer. Verse 5 in that Psalm 62. My soul waits silently for God alone. For my expectations is from him. <laughs> Come on. What he realized, I got to take my expectations out of man. Because if a man's ways pleases the Lord, God said, I'll even make his enemies be at peace with him. Listen, if you got a prayer request, you can put it on the screen. I'm just going to pray that the spirit leads us because it's time for men to pray. Glory to God, because your captivity turns in prayer. Father, we thank you for this hour. We thank you, God, for this enlightening, refreshing, and reviving moment. Glory to God, restore the years, mm, hallelujah, that the enemy has stolen, the canker worm, the palmer worm. Glory to God, that has ate away from good men. Glory to God, re re restore the joy of our salvation. Glory to God. Restore the peace. Renew our joy. Let joy spring forth this morning. Because we've been weeping for many nights. Mm, hallelujah. Glory to God. But let the joy come forth this morning. We thank you and we give you praise right now. Father God, for what you are about to do in every man's life in this season. That returns back to the Father. Thanks be unto you, O God, who give us, us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. In the name of Jesus, that we are more than conquerors. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We shall pursue, overtake, and recover all, like King David said here. God, I thank you that we are in a season of recovery. We are in a season of restoration and refreshing. You've already prepared the high place for us. And like Nehemiah said when his enemies came, why should we come down? Why should the work cease and I come down to deal with you in a place of, oh no, I refuse to come down. God, from this day forward, as men begin to go back up high in their rightful position and place of authority, in the name of Jesus, oh God, God, give us the strength to never come down again. Glory to God. As your word says um, in Proverbs 24 and 7, wisdom is too high for a fool. God, allow us to win with wisdom. Hallelujah. And stay high with wisdom. 
and not stoop to the fool's level any longer. In the name of Jesus, glory to God, we thank you and we give you praise. And God, according to Luke chapter 1 verse 17, you said, and the man with the spirit and the power of Elijah, he will prepare the people for the coming of the Lord. He will turn the hearts of the fathers, there it is, glory to God, to their children. And will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. And God, we realize that's the key right there. The enemy don't want the hearts of the fathers to be returned back to the children. Glory to God. Oh, and he don't want the rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. But God, I thank you in Jesus' name that your word and your power is going to prevail. My brother, the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent take it by force. May the force be with you and your household to take what's rightfully yours. In Jesus' name, peace and love. This is the Coach's Corner with Winning with Wisdom. Listen, if you hadn't got your copy yet, this is for men that want to go high. Women, if you got men in your life, invest, get them this book. You can go to winningwithwisdom.net, the website, pick it up. You can hit me up in my inbox on here, get your copy. It's everyday strategies for success, to stay in a high place of prayer. Wisdom is too high for a fool. You either winning with wisdom or you're losing with foolishness is the motto. I'll see you next Thursday. Glory to God. Next Thursday. Next Thursday. Come with your power. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. It's prayer time. Mm. It's prayer time. Man, I'll always pray. Glory to God. Mm. Yes, Lord. Come however you want. You just tell him to